Hi, this is Brian Fogarty, and in this video, which is our first here, we are going to look at doing logit and probit regression using R. And so this video we're going to do is just really just a real simple one. It's our first one here. So we're just going to take a look at how to actually run it in R. And so what I'm doing here is, uh, so I'm using R Markdown. And so the title, which if you've used it before, I don't know, uh, is right up here. And we're going to do a Word uh, document output. And so what I've done is go ahead and I've set the working directory. And I'm using the data source that I'm using here is the 2011 Scottish census data, um, which also has, this, you, know, you can see from the name there, it says it's cleaned and it's using Stata 12. So it's actually a Stata 12 data set. Um, you can see that from the .dta. And so given that it's a, a, a version 12 uh, Stata data set, we can actually use the foreign library. So if we just run this here, I've actually already done this, but we can show up here. So it comes up right here in the window um, that says data where there's 18 variables and 63,000 observations. All right, so I, in this video, we're not gonna do a lot of, of data management stuff. Um, I'll put a link to the videos that are for uh, my book that came out recently on this. Um, but uh, what we're going to do is one of the variables we're going to look at here is um, someone's marital status. And so the variable has five different categories in it. And so what, we're, what we do here using the car package is we actually just recode it in order to make it a uh, simple dummy variable where it's one if someone is married or in a civil partnership and zero otherwise. So I'm just gonna highlight this and run this. Okay. Okay, so the data set again is the Scottish census. And what we're gonna do here is we're going to run a real simple regression. We're just taking a look at how to do these things here. Um, using a our outcome variable, which you might call a dependent variable, is uh, whether someone's employed or not. All right, and then we're going to use a uh, three predictor variable. So, so the marital dummy one that we just uh, did above, and then someone's gender, and then someone's health status. So health status uh, in this data set is a variable with five categories that are increasing on how good someone reported their health. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here, so so if, if you're not used to our markdown, um, this this little thing here this is a code chunk and so what it's doing is it's telling you to um, we want this code to actually show up in the document that's what that gray space looks like right there um, and so echo equals true there's a whole bunch of options here you can do but echo equals true just means show everything show show all the errors uh, warnings and the code itself more importantly okay so um, I'm going to cut through a bunch of stuff here, and so if you're used to doing using R, right, you know that it's an object-oriented language, and so um, what we're going to do, I'm going to do two versions here of how to look at this. So we're going to create an object called Model 1, and then to do a logit regression, we're going to use the GLM function. All right, so if you've done linear regression in R, the shape of it looks exact same as that. So the linear regression in R is with LM, this is with GLM. And so our variable here is employment underscore dummy. Okay, and then we have tilde, which separates the outcome variable from the predictors, and then gender plus general underscore health. Okay, plus our marital dummy variable okay and then uh, we need to specify the model that we're using because GLM right stands for generalized linear model so that can apply to basically anything that's not a linear model and so we need to specify this so we're gonna do family equals um, actually you know what this is what I'm gonna do because it's gonna make the code look better when we do the, the R markdown I'm gonna do after this comma here I'm gonna do enter and then bring it down to the next line so we're going to do family equals binomial, whoops, binomial, and then what the link function is. So we specify the link function within the GLM, and so it's logit. 
Okay, and then what we're going to do as well is we're going to just be complete here and we're going to specify an NA action. And so this, so the NA action is just uh, what, what should you do or what should R do with missing values? All right, so NA, that's what that stands for. So we're going to do NA equals NA omit. So there's a bunch of different options you could do here. You could do NA remove. Uh, that's another one. And then we just specify what the data is. So data equals data. All right, so let's highlight that. Okay, and this is going to be the tricky thing, which if you haven't used R, right? So that just created that object. So we saw we got no errors, but we don't get the output. So what you need to do is actually do summary and then model dot one. Um, what I like to do actually instead, so I'm going to run that and I'm going to rerun this here, is take this first line of code and I'm just going to copy paste it and then wrap summary function around that. So summary, um, open parenthesis and then close it at the end. Okay. All right, so I just reran it here. So let's take a look at what the output is. I'm going to pull this up just a little bit here. Okay. All right, so we get this output. Um, it looks quite similar to any type of um, program uh, anytime you're doing regression here. Um, and so we have here um, a bunch of different information. Um, with the GLM function, we get the AIC down here. One of the things it doesn't give us, which we'll, we're, we're going to look at in a little bit, is the um, pseudo R squared numbers. All right, so we're going to we'll, we'll take a look at those in a minute. Um, but what we can do here is we see what variables uh, are statistically significant uh, based on the traditional definitions of this. So we have uh, gender, general health, and marital dummy, right? So R gives you redundant information to figure out whether or not something's statistically significant. Okay, we have the z-score here, which we're just looking for, absolute value of 1.96, all right, uh, the p-value, and then if you don't like p-values, you don't like numbers, you just like pictures, you have stars, all right. So what this shows is that all of these are statistically significant predictors of whether or not someone is employed. Okay, so um, one of the things with doing logit and probit regression is that you cannot interpret these coefficients, all right? Um, that's why we need to do a whole bunch of other, which we're going to do in a later video, a whole bunch of other things with doing actually interpreting. Uh, so you can't interpret these like you would in a linear regression. It doesn't make any sense, all right? Uh, what you can do, though, is you can figure out uh, what is the general effect here. So gender, the higher category is female. So given that it's a negative coefficient, that means that roughly that the, the likelihood or the probability of a, a woman being employed is less than a man. And then this says that, uh, the so general health is a positive coefficient. So this says that uh, as someone's health is, is better, they're more likely to be employed. And then this is the marital dummy, which is the higher category is that, um, uh, is that someone's married and then so zero is someone is not and we left that very vague um, meaning like you could be retired or a student so this is positive so that means if you're married you're more likely to be employed okay so let's say that you want to run a probit regression instead of a logit now uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about the sort of major differences in these things um, but in terms of binary outcome models, it really is the case that the real big difference between logit and probit is just the assumptions made about the error distributions. So logit assumes you have a logistic error distribution where probit assumes uh, you have a normal error distribution. And so that's the main, that's the main difference really. Um, People, a lot of people like probit because there's a, a lot more known about the normal distribution than the logistic distribution, but you're going to get roughly the same results. The coefficients are going to just be different sizes, but when you interpret the effects, they're going to be roughly the same. Um, and we'll see as well that with, with logit, um, you can do odds ratio, but you cannot do that with probit. All right, so to do probit in R, what we do here is I'm just going to steal the code from above with the logit regression. And I'm going to change this to instead of model one, model two. All right. 
And then I'm going to change the link here. And so instead of logit, I'm going to do probe it. All right. So I'm just going to highlight all this and just run this. Okay. So we can see, again, the output looks quite similar to what we just saw with logit. All right. And we have that the uh, we still have this sort of same conclusions about the statistical significance and the direction of the effects. Okay, so that's it for this video. Again, we're just taking a quick look at, he, at, at how to just simply run Logit and probe it. Um, in, in the next videos, we're going to look at other aspects here. Um, the final thing I want to do just here is, since we're using R Markdown, let's just run it. So to run our markdown, if you have file.rmd and we set it to Word here, you just click on this knit button and then it should hopefully not take very long. Sometimes it depends on how much code you have in there um, and the errors that if there's any errors, then there'll be a problem. And so, uh, so sometimes it takes longer than other times. All right. So it started the sync here. Um, it's going through the processes, hopefully. And then it, the other thing is, once you've run a, uh, a markdown document um, and then you make some changes and, and run it again, it'll go faster. Um, so it's just doing it here. It should not take very long, hopefully. We'll just give it a minute. Let's just give it a minute and come back. I'm just going to pause the video and then we'll come back and take a look at it. Okay, so I finally ran and spit this out right here. All right, so this is what you should have gotten. All right, what's nice, I mean, this is pretty, we haven't included any text or anything, but what's nice is that it makes, you know, if you're if you're doing a project or paper or something, it's just nice because it makes it nice and clean and everything like that. Um, and so I could do a, a video where we look more at um, doing our markdown, but we'll just leave it for now. All right, so, so again, in this video, we just look quickly at how to do logit and probit regression in R. Um, and so I'll see you next time.